Okay. Thank you, Shabani. So guys, hi, I'm Jenny. And before I introduce myself, actually, I want to get to know more of you. Can you give me a raise of hand if you are a content creator, a blogger? Can you raise a hand? Don't be shy. Okay. And then can you raise your hand if you're in e-commerce or you're selling stuff and using a website? That is perfect. So when I built this presentation, I don't know the ratio, so I kind of tried to fulfill both worlds. So I hopefully from this presentation, it will satisfy both of you. So just a little bit of introduction. Um, I came from this country where you can find Komodo dragon. It's actually Indonesia. <laughs> And my job is to work with publishers. So I help people who have a website, a content creator, sometimes in commerce as well. And they have high traffic and they're monetizing their website with AdSense, which is our product. So just to clarify, actually, I came from a product called Google AdSense. So AMP is not my product. But of course, you ask me why I'm here. <laughs> the reason why, maybe you'll discover later, is that web publisher actually benefited a lot from AMP. And this is why I'm passionate about AMP, and this is why I want to share a little bit of AMP today with you guys. And trust me, I'm not paid by AMP. It's a genuine uh, review. So, okay, so every one of you, can I know as well what is your most important KPI? Who thinks page view is the most important KPI? Page view, page view? You guys don't care about the traffic? <laughs> How about revenue? Raise hand. Revenue, okay. How about um, retention? Seven days, 20, 30 days, okay, perfect. So you guys are all about retention, you guys are all about revenue. Any other KPI that you guys interested in? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> subscribers. subscribers, okay, so you want subscribers, you want retention, and you want revenue, okay. So that is really common, actually, I, I work with almost 2,000 or 3,000 publishers in Indonesia, and everyone have a different needs. They have a different KPI and goals. And one thing in common that I believe is that if you believe in your users, you give what the user needs, you, you pro build a product that fits what they need, everything else will follow, whether it is revenue, traffic, retention, subscri subscribers, that will come to you naturally. So um, the thing is, when we talk about users, right, first thing first, we need to know where they came from. And uh, Shabani, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, Shabani has, has already given a little bit of teaser. It, the fact is that there are more smartphones today than uh, desktop. And it has been there since last year. In fact, since Q4 2016, there are more smartphones than desktop in the market. And it's not only that, it's not only about the quantity. In terms of depth, in terms of usage, there are more, uh, there, there are more people who are using smartphone than desktop as well. Have you ever wondered in Singapore, uh, when you have a website, what is the average percentage of mobile users that access your website in Singapore? Do you want to give a guess? Uh, just now I hear 60%, and then 80%, and then any, any other guesser? 90? Okay, for Singapore. Okay, so just now whoever seeing 60%, you are the most correct. It's about 55 to 60% for Singapore. But those who are saying 80%, you are not wrong, but it's just the country that is wrong. So if you're talking about Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, yes, it's about 80 to 85% mobile traffic. So may I know, um, can you also raise a hand? Are you guys targeting for Singapore audiences? Anyone targeting Singapore only as the audience? Okay, and anyone's targeting Southeast Asia? Anyone targeting the rest of the world? I, I mean, any countries? Okay, so if you are targeting Singapore and if you're targeting the rest of the country, then I think multi-screen is really important. It's important for you to optimize not only on desktop, but also on tablet and on the mobile smartphone. For those of you who are targeting Southeast Asia, which with the average of 65 to 70% usage of mobile smartphone, then mobile is the number one. It's mobile first. And the thing is, now we're, if you're talking about mobile, right, what are the one thing that is most important? Anyone want to guess? What is the one thing that you user hate the most when they are browsing through mobile smartphone? Yes? Small phones. And then anything else? Speed. Small loading speed. And then? Advertisement? Anything else? 
Okay, that's that's a good guess. I I, I, I hate I hate small fonts, but um, the gentleman over there is actually representing majority of the people. In fact, half of the surveyors that we done during our search says that one thing that they hate the most when they are browsing through smartphone is actually waiting for a mobile page to load. So if your website is too slow, they don't like it. And some somebody says about the uh, advertisement. Yes, uh, we see that there's a concerns of um, interstitial or annoying ads by 13%, but they un people generally understand if you're providing free content, you need to make a living by advertisement. So when you're cre creating a website, be it for e-commerce or for uh, web publishing, the number one feature that you need to think about when it comes to mobile is actually the speed. It's not additional features, it's the speed that matters. Now the next question is, how fast should I have my website, right? So before I give you the answer, I want you guys to test. Open your smartphone, open testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. And then you open the page that is important the most for your website. If you are a content creator, do not test the home page. Test the article page where they land to your website. If you're e-commerce, I want you to test two things. Number one, the home page. Number two, the product page. I will wait for you. I'll give you about one minute. If you have the numbers, do not share it with the people next to you because it's confidential for you. But I will ask you to raise your hand later. <laughs> so when you are done, can you just wave your hand so at least I know you are done? <laughs> Okay, you're the fastest, thank you. Let's wait for our friends. You good? Not too, wait, okay. Um, the gentleman who raised the hand as the first time, can you let me know, is your speed more than 10 seconds? If yes, give me like this, if no, more than 10 seconds. Oh, uh, below 10 seconds. That's really great. Good job. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Everyone have the numbers? If yes, can you wave your hand? That is perfect. Okay, maybe we'll wait for another 30 seconds for the rest. Thank you. Okay, maybe let's start a raise of hand. Um, Any one of you have a page speed below 10 seconds? Please raise your hand. Below five seconds. Wow, okay, that's only, it's only these two gentlemen. Below three seconds? Oh my God, you're the MVP. Everyone please remember him, he could be your next consultant. <laughs> okay, so let me reveal. So why does page speed matters? We actually done, there's a lot of independent third party studies that is not even done by Google, um, but we see it's very consistent. In fact, um, the longer the user have to wait for your website, the higher the bounce rate. So if let's say your page is loading above 10 seconds, the bounce rate is approximately 58 to 60%. Can you imagine if somebody open, trying to open the link, whether it's to search or social media or their friends, and half, more than half of it actually dropped down and they didn't go to your website. It's actually opportunity wasted, right? So in case you're wondering, so what's the difference having a website that are 10 seconds versus five seconds versus three seconds or one seconds? For a starter, ideally, if you can make your website loads as fast as one second, I know this is really difficult, but just hypothetically, comparing to a website that loads only one second, a three second website actually equivalent to 22% drop off in page view. And for those of you who are e-commerce, it means 22% drop off in conversion. 
And for those of you who are thinking about user retention, that means about half, uh, about 50% more bounce rate than a website that loads for one second. And this is even worse when you are talking about five second website. Uh, the bounce rate will actually double and the conversion drop by over 30%. So indeed, speed is important. You can actually quantify the revenue or investment you can actually talk to your stakeholder and mention that, hey, we need to improve the page speed by a few seconds because this is the estimated number of ROI that arising from that. So speed is the key. In case, for those of you who are content creator and you want to know roughly how much more, and especially if you're monetizing with ads, if you want to know the estimated revenue that you have by reducing the page speed by three seconds, talk to me later, I'll give you a link. It's really fun and interactive. So, in fact, speed is important, yet there's a lot of websites that doesn't meet the need of users. It's either lot so slow, or they take so much data. And don't worry, I, I mean, you are not alone. I've been, I've been working with publishers for almost two years now, and just last three months alone, I worked with 200 publishers, either one-to-one -one or through an event, and they all know that speed is important. But yet, it's so difficult to improve the page speed. Hard tuning a website takes a lot of resources, investment, finding a, the right uh, talent or freelancer to help you is so difficult. And if you think about it, this is like an average mobile website that's really slow. We know that hard tuned website that is really fast is, is really ideal. But again, as I mentioned, it's difficult to achieve that. And in case you're wondering why this person who are not working for AMP, actually working for another Google product called AdSense, Talking about AMP, <laughs> the reason why, because AMP has helped a lot of my publishers. AMP is like the instant noodle or instant solution of improving your website to be much faster. It's not as fast as a hard tune website. So of course, if you, have, if you are a professional company, you have uh, resources, you have an IT team, it's always advisable to eventually go to hard tune your website. But if you are a single fighter, you just get started in mobile publishing, you are a startup, um, maybe still pre-seed or series A, it's, it, there is no harm to consider the instant solution, which is AMP. So of course you will ask me, what is AMP then? Uh, who knows what AMP stands for? Do not look at your card. Do not look at your card. Yes? Perfect. And then how do you know about AMP Bef beside this event? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Anyone knows about AMP before this event? Okay, that's really encouraging. Thank you, thank you. So AMP is actually an, stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. It's an open source project. Um, it's just like Android, it's open source. Everyone can use it for free. Everyone can modify, upgrade, cr contribute codes for free as well. And um, basically what it does is that it's significantly improve your page speed and reduce the data by how much. So. If you're comparing the mobile website, which we call as canonical website, versus an AMP, AMP is about four times faster and consume 10 times less data. Of course, you ask me, how can that be possible? There's a lot of reasons. I'm not an engineer myself, but what I understand is that number one, uh, just last year, they, com they are managed to optimize the page, uh, the, the image sizes, so they compress the image so, uh, to as small as possible, yet, with naked eyes, you can't differentiate the resolution. So image compression makes a lot of matters. And why does image solution matters a lot? Because actually, majority of the data from your website came from the image, and this is the one that slows down your website. Number two, there's AMP caching, meaning that, for example, um, anyone here, just everyone, most of you, you have multiple markets, right? Um, what is your, maybe, you raise your hand, right, about uh, having multiple markets. Uh, where do you host your web, your server? Which market do you host your server? The guy with the gray shirt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where do you host your, your server? Singapore. Uh, and then where is the majority of your user came from? Do you, what's the reason for you to host it in Singapore then? I see, got it. That makes sense. And um, is your pitch speed right now above 10 seconds? Okay, that's good. Okay. So 
that this is good means that you optimize your website significantly. But one of the reasons that usually uh, the page is not so fast, there's a lot of reasons, by the way, but one of the reasons usually is because the server and the user are so far away. So the user, for example, is in country A, and the server is in country B. It's so, so far, there is like server response delay. And the thing is that if you use AMP, there is a lot of Google Catch. Google Catch, sorry, I pronounced wrongly. And it makes it easier for user to load the content, and it makes it faster. And the good news is that AMP is not only performing really well, it's actually very beautiful. Let me give you an example. So this is an example. Can you see it from the back? So this is an example of AMP pages from our friends from Guardian, Folk, CNN. So as you can see, you almost cannot distinguish between AMP pages with mobile websites. And um, of course, the next question is that, OK, I, I want a good performing website, but what matters the most for majority of you is monetization, right? You monetize either through e-commerce, you monetize either through subscription, or through ads. So I will touch three of, you, uh, three of them, don't worry. So first thing first, for those of you who are using subscription method, uh, AMP supported subscription with AMP-access. So what it does is that they will be able, they will enable you to tag the user. For example, if the user is paying, you can tag them as subscriber. And otherwise, they are anonymous. So you can limit the certain document to be only be accessible to subscriber. You can even create a frequency capping. For example, for anonymous unique user, they can read sample article maximum three times a week, something like that. That can easily be done with AMP desk access. And don't worry, when it, you ask me, it sounds really easy, but I think the implementation is so scary. Don't worry, later I'll give you all the resources so you can try it out. And also for those of you who are monetizing through ads, anyone here using ad networks? No ad networks users, okay. So, oh, you are using, okay, perfect. So if you are using um, ad networks, AMP actually support all the standard ad formats. So as long as they are IAB standard or the industry standard for advertising, they are supported by AMP. And we support seven, over 70 major ad networks and ad platform as well. And me being very biased, I'm from AdSense, I'm really excited AdSense is there, DFP is there, and AdX is there. So all Google monetization are supported by AMP as well. And of course you ask me, then if I monetize with ads with AMP, how does the performance go? So in, in advertising, we have this metric called viewability. It means that how many percent of the user actually looking at that ads. And we found out that people who are using AMP is actually about 80% publishers experiencing a better viewability and 90% actually imp uh, improving in terms of CTR. And that's really, really positive. And of course, just now I mentioned that everyone have a different KPI, right? So for our friends in Terra and Times, user engagement is the most important. And then Terra, when they are looking at the performance between AMP pages and normal AMP pages, actually users spend more time on AMP pages, three times longer than their canonical website. Canonical means, by the way, usual mobile website. And then Times, they see that as an overall business, ever since they implemented AMP, the time that is spent by the user increased by 13%. And then just now, some of you mentioned about retention. Our friends in Washington Post see that there are 20% increase in seven, day, seven days user retention. So that's really, really positive. And for those of you who are thinking of getting more traffic, page view, page view growth, so AMP has been really useful in capturing more new traffic. And that has been explained by Gizmodo as well as ML.ru. And then for monetization, I have a lot of case study, but since many of you are not monetizing, so I will skip it. But one of them is by Teats, which is uh, have uh, tripled their revenue, increase in 200% in monetization. Okay, I, I'll move on to the e-commerce, which is the more exciting part for all of you. <laughs> so people will be asking, Jenny, is this, I heard that AMP is not supporting e-commerce. Yes and no. Maybe if you talk about it two years ago, yes, we were only focusing on content creation and content um, optimization. But now, since last year, we've been investing a lot on supporting our friends in e-commerce. And just this year, we want to announce a lot of success from our e-commerce partners. Uh, I'll, 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 go, I'll go with the success story right after this. But one of the features that we launched is AMP Deskbind. 
this is like a component that enable um, e-commerce website to make the website more interactive. For example, you have a picture of a, of a clothes that is what color, and then user click on the yellow, and then registering the user click, they will automatically change the clothes to yellow. So this is really good at, uh, for websites such as e-commerce. And we see that our friends in e-commerce has been doing really well as well. For example, One Mobile and Wego, the most common brand, they, they approximately double their conversion, which is really positive. And then Greenwiz, uh, maybe f anyone from France? Yes, then you should know the brand, right? Yes, so Greenwiz is always focused on the organic content and they're mobile first. So when they came to e-commerce and when they see that traffic in mobile has been increasing, they notice that in desktop versus mobile, the conversion is so different. And I think pretty sure you guys experience the same thing as well. They're in their mobile website, they, their conversion is only a quarter of their desktop conversion. And they are always trying to find a way how to improve the conversion in mobile. And ever since they use AMP, their conversion has been increased by 80%, which is really, really great. And for Milestones, it's actually a consulting company. They help in um, hus uh, hospitality industry. They have uh, hotels and all the hospitality in, uh, kept users to go to AMP. And they see that the result is also really positive for their clients. And in case you're wondering what other brands and what other companies has been on the AMP, there's a lot of them, but some of them you can see on the screen. We have AliExpress, Lancome, uh, 1,800 flowers, maybe those of you who bought flowers for the loved one before, eBay, and so on and so on. And also, there's a lot of questions. Jenny, isn't AMP only be used on Google search? What if my client came from markets like China or Japan, where Google search doesn't have any good um, usage? The good news is that AMP, again, is an open source project. And every year, we always have partners that partnering with AMP. So this year, we are very excited, actually, because they have three new partners that now use link their search engine to AMP. Do you guys want to guess? What are the three partners in here that just recently joined AMP? Baidu, really good. And then? Sogo, oh my god, you guys must be really in tech. That's really good. Okay, Baidu, Sogo, and then what else? And the other one is uh, Yahoo Japan. So Baidu and Sogo made up 90% of the market share of search engine in China. So for those of you who want to go to uh, penetrate uh, China market, then AMP is a good starting point. And then for those of you who have uh, users in Japan, uh, Yahoo Japan is actually contributing to 58 million active users in Japan. So it's really, really great. And we are really optimistic because every year we see an accelerating number of third party that join the movement to create the website that is faster and good for the user experience. So, by the way, just a fun fact, just a few weeks ago, actually AMP turns two years old. Yeah, and what's really exciting for me, because when I know about AMP since last year, and when I know about AMP last year, I remember there was somebody talking about AMP and I was sitting there with like you guys, and they told me that there are almost one million domains that are using AMP. And today we are about two years and few weeks of AMP, and we have 25 millions of domains that are using AMP. Can you see how much, how fast it grows? And of course you're wondering, how come it becomes so fast? Number one, people see the value of page speed. Number two, people see the value of AMP. It enables them to make their website much faster. They see the result. They see that numbers of time that spend on their website because of AMP is uh, longer, they see there is increasing of conversion, an average of 20% based on our studies. And yeah, and then the next question is that, yeah, I want to know more about AMP, how can I implement? So let me share with you on how you can get started with AMP. So depending on where, uh, what kind of website that you're using, whether WordPress or custom HTML or other CMS, the way you implement is kind of different. So if you're using WordPress, it's so simple. It's just like a plugin, basically. If you are using uh, custom HTML, do not be afraid. I have three websites that I think you will like a lot. <laughs> so let me just go through one by one. So ampproject.org is the official website. You can find everything there. Uh, 
But I know some, I mean, I came from Indonesia and Indonesians like everything instant. That's why we eat a lot of instant noodles. So we love AMP by example. AMP example is, for example, I want to create a common section. I want to create a, a, what is it called? I want to create a checkout box. I want to create a payment getaway, blah, blah, blah. All the codes are available there. You can see the demo. You can see the, the, the code. And that you can just copy, paste, and customize. It's really, really nice. And for those of you who likes templates, we have ampstart.com. This is literally, if you can think about WordPress template, uh, Blogspot template, this is the same thing. This is like basically AMP template. You can download it for free. You can customize it anyhow you want it. And then if you like it and you feel that you want more templates, you can even request directly. There will like a button there. You can ask the community and say, hey, I like this template. Can we have more of that? And for those of you who are coding and make a new template, you can even contribute to the society and then uh, share your template there for people to use. And for those of you who are using WordPress, the good news is that you can go to WordPress.org and search for AMP right now. And you can see there's a lot of plugins that support AMP. And me, I, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be less biased. So instead of recommending any uh, plugins, I will just share with you a tips on how you can choose the right plugins. I'm pretty sure you guys know more better than me, but just as a starter, it's important for you to see like, um, when they are updated, which version that is supported by the plugins, and how's the rating overall, how many people have used it, as well as whether or not the plugin users a plugin maker support questions. So I think that's really important. And that's, um, that's the kind of thing that my publisher will give feedback to me as well. And of, of course, whatever method you use, whether custom HTML or even like plugins or whichever plugins that you use, always remember once you upload it into your website, use this URL, search.google.com, very simple, slash task slash AMP, and see if your website is valid. If it's valid, it means that it's ready to go into Google search and you'll see, you start to see the blue links, the, the, the AMP uh, signature. If not, they will tell you which line is broken. So it's easier for you to troubleshoot. So yeah, that's about it actually. So I just want to focus, in order for you to go to the future when mobile traffic is becoming the trend, um, you need to really cater to what your user need. And to succeed in mobile, you need to have a very fast website. You can do any how you want it. You can hard tune it. Or for those of you who want to get started, a simpler version, simpler solution, you can consider AMP. Again, build it fast, build with AMP. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you very much. Uh, so we are open for questions if you want to ask anything to Jeannie. Okay, so just a second, just let me get the mic to you. Oh, I, I heard, I heard. Yeah, you heard, okay, all right. So, can I repeat your question? When is the Google Hangout for AMP, is that correct? The next one, okay. So, to, I can ask the official AMP team, but actually, I came from publishing team, and I created a Hangout spe specifically focused on publishing. So, if you are more interested in creating content and then monetizing your content with ads, just let me know. We can exchange email, and I can send you the recording. No problem. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hi. OK. Uh, two questions. Two. One is that when we have made a new website or uh, existing website, which are now uh, AMP uh, compatible or AMP, uh, will Google automatically pick up and s display the AMP page on search? Mm -hmm. Or do we need to do something else or wait for a certain period? Okay, maybe I'll j answer that question first. Um, have you validated, meaning that you do the test? Uh, maybe I'll show you. Have you used this link before and then put the AMP page and run it? Uh, yes. Okay, and it's already validated. Okay, so uh, basically once you have validated this, then it will immediately appear in the search results? Yes, it will. Uh, so there, okay, maybe I'll, if you guys don't mind, I'll give more information. <laughs> so there are four different ways, maybe, maybe five, depending on the country that you are in. It, there are four different ways that an AMP page can appear on Google search. 
Number one, as long as you have a valid um, uh, AMP page, you'll see like an AMP logo on it. It's called the blue links. So that one, as long as your website is valid, it will automatically appear. No, unless, unless, unless you didn't link your AMP page with canonical and canonical with AMP. Number two, uh, so number two, three, and four, it's only appear if you have the correct structured data. So just for all of you, structured data is like a Google translator uh, for us to the machine. So basically you're telling them that which one is the title, which one is the image, which one is the content, blah, blah, blah. So if you have the correct structured data with schema or um, other platform, then you are applicable to appear in three more stuff. Number one is top stories. So top story is when your website already have a good SEO and it already appear on the first page. Then you will appear on the carousel on top along with other websites that are performing as good. And then number two is um, host carousel. Host carousel means like this. For example, user query for soccer. And then you have a sport website. So of course you have multiple soccer content, right? So the host carousel will show multiple pages in terms of carousel that is relevant to the user queries. So user can quickly see, okay, for this website, they have multiple content about soccer and which one do I like? So it increased the click-through rate of the user to the website. And then the last one is called rich cart. It's only applicable for a particular vertical, which is restaurant, entertainment, and uh, recipe. So if you have a website in this three vertical, restaurant, entertainment and recipe, then you're applicable to appear on the rich card. Rich card is basically um, a unique way on how Google search display your result. Like for example, instead of a normal article, they have like a rating of the restaurant or rating of the movie and so on and so on. I hope that answers your question. And the second one? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, second question is that um, what you say AMP mm -hmm. in its current version at the moment uh, is mature enough so that we no longer have to maintain or develop a separate uh, responsive mm -hmm website or um, mobile version of the website? So let me clarify. Actually, AMP is not meant to substitute your mobile website. It's supposed to complement. So AMP, the reason why it's loading really fast is because they have the AMP catch, right? So if let's say you are using platform that are supported by uh, AMP, that let's say just now uh, you have Pinterest, you have Twitter, you have Google search, Baidu, and so on and so on, uh, they can quickly, when they are doing a query on their search engine and platform, they can quickly catch your content so that when user click on it, it's so much faster and almost instant. But you shouldn't neglect the fact that mobile website is also important. The canonical website is still have to be optimized. If you're thinking about, hey, I just want to build one thing instead of two things, then the solution for you is actually PWA, or called Progressive Web App. Uh, I don't want to confuse you, but we can talk offline. I will share with you more about that later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Anybody else wants to ask anything? No more? No more questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Thank, Thank you so you. much. That was Thank a power-packed. <laughs>